was life like for you growing up? I grew up in a little town in Illinois, right on the Mississippi River on the western edge of Illinois. Uh, my mother was a writer. Uh, my father ran a factory, but he bought, uh, you know, properties on the weekends, literally on the sheriff's courthouse steps, you know, from the auctions. And then we'd fix them up on the weekends and stuff and he'd rent them out. Uh, but I've just always had a little bit of both of them in pretty much everything I've ever done. Uh, but yeah, it was, I'm the youngest of six kids. Um, I, I started working when I was way too young. I was probably nine or 10 delivering papers and then shoveling sidewalks, mowing lawns, and eventually parlayed that into a uh, pretty regular gig. I got myself a job with my godparents. They ran a funeral home and I did their lawn care and cleaned their cars and shoveled their snow and did all that stuff. I did that all the way until I went to college because, you know, youngest of six kids, it's not exactly like my parents were just showering money on us. So, you know, they covered all the basics and then. If I wanted anything else, it was up to old Glenn to go find it. And so I learned <laughs> very, very quickly. I gotta, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to ask yeah, go what what I uh, just this past holiday season, I actually drove out to Kansas City. So that was actually the first time in my adult mm -hmm. life that I, I went past Indianapolis going out that way. So what part what small town in western <laughs> Illinois are you from? <laughs> uh, Fulton, Illinois, if you go if you were to take, uh, for instance, 80 across the, the the state right where illinois crosses into iowa is a little cluster of cities called the quad cities um, okay if you were to just uh, go go north you know maybe half hour you'd run right into us so okay okay i've heard of quad mm -hmm. cities before because there's actually a real mm -hmm. estate agent here in central ohio that's from the quad cities so i'm a really i'm a nerd when it comes to like maps and geography and all those things i don't know it's just yeah. i always have to ask so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah. so so you so you, um small town you know mm -hmm. and and found out quickly you know it sounds like from growing up that you know you had to go out and hustle if you wanted you know the extra stuff yep. or um, how did you, you know, was it just from, from growing up with the family dynamic of, of that work ethic, or did you always have kind of like that go getter entrepreneurship, you know, mentality? Well, I, I, I have to think it came from my folks because, um, all of my siblings did the same thing. You know, we all hustle. They all, I've lost count of the number of small businesses that my siblings and I have started and either lost or sold or we're still doing or you know we've none of us have taken like a pure just you know go to high school go to college get a job you know work till you retire um none of us have no not a lot of people haven't done that but literally all six of us have taken these crazy paths so i gotta yeah. think that mom and dad had something to do with it i mean he even though he worked a regular factory job all those years he, he always had stuff going on the side and usually it was rental properties. He would buy them. And I, don't, I honestly can't remember him ever selling one. I'm sure he, he must have at some point, but you know, when he passed away, he, he had several dozen that he was still sitting on from the seventies. So, um, and then my mom, when, uh, we got old enough to, you know, for her to do other stuff, she would, um, she worked for all these different newspapers. She would write stories and then try to sell them to the news. She didn't have like a regular, editor job or anything that came later but you know and she was always just skipping through that industry doing different things and moving up and up and so i, I guess it's just always been there's never a question that, that, that if you were going to make your way you were going to make your way you know and it might be working for somebody else but there's always this other option you know they never i never had the whole i, I read a lot of stories about entrepreneurs and you, you you almost invariably you find that their family was supportive of the concept you know, versus other people who are like, oh, my God, you can't start a business. You're going to fail. And, you know, <laughs> I never heard that growing up ever. Yeah. Nope. No, that's I mean, I think that it's a huge difference, too. You know, just mentality mindset. Um, and I think about this a lot. And it's kind of in this regards. It's like, you know, as kids and stuff, you know, we're told to dream and, and to uh, think big and we can be whatever we want. Yep. And then right around like that, what? Mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13 society, yep. you know, parents, the mm -hmm. other pressures of, of other kids. It's, you know, kind of like brings you back in. It's like, oh no, here's, you know, mm -hmm. here's the way that, you know, you need to go, the path that you need to take. 
um, was <laughs> was real estate something that you took interest in early on with with your your dad and your family buying up rental properties, or was it like, yeah, this is great, but mm, not really for me? So you know what I took away from it was the handiwork, you know, the that I could always fix stuff at my own house. I really liked that, and that stuck with me all through. But no, no, the investing part or any of that stuff never really became that's not why I got into it. Um, no, I, I uh, you know, I had always planned on being like a lawyer or something. I, I wanted to be a lawyer since I was old enough to crawl. And then uh, when I got into high school, just stuff happened. I mean, we can talk about it, but stuff happened and it led me down a completely different path. But no, I, I don't think that it must have laid there dormant, you know, like a seed that finally gets some sunlight or something because much later in my thirties, then all of a sudden, this became a central focus of my life. Uh, but yeah, let's, no. um, yeah, let's, let's, let's lead up, go up to, you know, high school years, um, you know, after high school, I know you said, you know, you didn't really do the traditional college route, kind of lead me up to, you know, high school, and then your first kind of career, you know, focus. Well, that's the funny thing. As much as we were encouraged, my mom desperately wanted us all to go to college. So <laughs> Uh, I went to, I was going to public school and along about seventh or eighth grade, I was doing some stupid stuff. And my mother, instead of, you know, coming down on me like a ton of bricks, she just decided she was going to have me visit another school. So she had me visit this uh, Christian school, private Christian school. And we weren't what I would call a, an overly religious family or anything. But, mm -hmm. you know, I go from the bigger public school, even in a small town like that, to this tiny little school. I graduated with eight people me and I was one of those eight. So it was a very, very small school. So that was just how she was brilliant about stuff like that. Instead of taking the, the usual punishment, lock you down type path. She's just like, you know what, I'm gonna put them in a different environment and see how that goes. And she didn't force me. She made it, let's just say very, very attractive to go and very, very unattractive not to go, but she did not force me. Um, I think she learned with my older sisters, that was probably a terrible idea, <laughs> but, but, uh, so that, and, and I'm, so I'm, I'm rolling along. Um, and I decided, I don't know why I decided to take three languages at the same time. So I'm taking German, Spanish, and Latin at the same time. Wow. Oh, it was horrible. It was awful. And I wanted to drop Latin and it was taught by the school principal. So that was not fun. He was like, a he's a minister, but he was also he must have been a used car salesman or something in another life because he opened like every sentence with here's the deal here's the deal so i go to him i tell him hey I'm, i need to drop one of these languages and i want to drop latin and he said all right well here's the deal they need guys in the choir so if you want to drop latin you have to join choir i'm just like what what and he said take it or leave it i don't care but that's it so i joined choir and um i ended up getting away from wanting to be a lawyer and I just fell in love with music. So I actually did go to college for music. Um, okay. And I went right right out of high school. I went over to, uh, there's a little college in uh, a liberal arts college in Iowa, uh, in Mount Vernon, Iowa called Cornell College. And uh, it's a it's a unique setting, but, uh, and I, I majored in music and did it for four years and graduated on time and all that good stuff. And, you know, I would have never seen that coming if it hadn't been for Mr. Mr. Biker, my principal, you know, shoving me down this other path. But did you, that's the way did life you works, have, right? Yeah. Did you have interest in music prior to that? Or is that where you just kind of fell in love with it? Um, I was in school band, you know, I played the drums and, you know, thoughts I'd always probably, I had a drum set and thought it would be pretty cool, but becoming a singer was never in the car. I, I was, honestly, I was pretty pissed about it. Um, I went home and said something to my mom. I'm like, he can't make me do that. And she was like, apparently he can. So, I mean, you have a choice. So it's not like he made you. So whatever. So I, yeah, I begrudgingly went to choir and just immediately was like enthralled with this idea and started taking singing lessons and started joining other things outside of high school. And it really became the central part of my life for a number of years after that. And, and the know. seeking of the seeking of the, the extra things outside of school, you know, in order to get mm -hmm. better, was that something that you just did and, and seeked out yourself or was it recommended? Like, cause I think about myself, you know, like growing up, like I wasn't out there trying mm -hmm. to get better at X, Y, and Z while <laughs> in high school. I was, I was like, 
hey, I, I'm playing sports. I'm going to school. That's what I'm doing. You know, like, so I, I want to, I'm, I'm just curious because I think that probably will lead into, you know, your success into real estate as to that, that mindset of wanting to seek out to be better. Uh, you know, now that you put it that way, I guess I never connected those dots. So hats off to you for that. Um, I was my girlfriend at the time. Um, she was a, a year older than me and from Iowa, because it's right. It was, you know, two minutes across the river. So we had a lot of kids. Well, we didn't have a lot of kids. We had a percentage of children who went to my school that were not from my town. They came from other towns. But sure. anyway, um, and her mom played piano for the local college over in Iowa, Mount, Mount St. Clair College. Uh, she did a lot of things with the theater and things like that. And she heard about this audition um, for, uh, they were doing a production of Godspell, like an old 70s musical. And uh, so she was like, you guys should, you should audition. So I go over and I audition and one thing leads to another and I get a part. And then the people running that were like, you know, you should probably think about taking lessons. So we, several of us from my school started taking lessons with a lady at the college. So that was kind of my next leapfrog as to, uh, and it was a real catalyst for then deciding to study music in college, because now I'm seeing it at a higher level. I'm seeing more possibilities. Uh, my dad, I honestly wasn't that, that thrilled about this whole, you're going to, you're going to go to college, spend all this money and you're going to walk out with a degree in music. Like you really needed to, you know, but whatever he, he, he kind of left it there. But yeah, that I guess I never thought about that. But I took lessons all through college because part of the, you know, if you're going to major in music, you 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 have to take a lot of lessons, and so um, it did stick with me. I've I've uh, honestly I couldn't tell you. I probably could put another kid through college for as much coaching as I've purchased over the years, whether it was, <laughs> you know, for the jobs I had or for for some skill I wanted that I would then go seek out somebody who was offering that. Now we can do it online, but back in the day, you had to either buy courses, or you had to go right. see experts, but yeah, you're right. right. Starting then there probably wasn't much, many gaps at all where I wasn't paying for coaching of some kind. And it's just, it's, it's just, no, it's fascinating to me because you know, I, part of what I, my story and what I tell people is like, you know, I got lucky when I got into this business and, and part of that was because my mentor, and my team lead, I'm still on the same team since day one. I've been doing it for 12 mm -hmm. years now. Day one, I had coaching, you know, real estate coaching. Mm. I grew up in sports. So I get the, I get the value of coaching just in, yep. in that regards. But from, from an actual business standpoint, you know, the power of having a coach to, to help you get to wherever you want to get to. Right. So I was just curious about that. And, um,